Hello, my pattern making friends. This is Rachel with Things We Wear, and today I'm gonna to talk about how to get paper patterns into a digital form. I'm gonna give you a few options um, and talk you through some ideas of what I do to take anything on paper or let's say a reference garment and put it into the digital world, which is something that we as pattern makers have to do a lot of. Um, of course, you know, it's never a good form to trace off or copy someone else's work, but I do find that studying what other companies are doing, if you really like the fit, you know, it's a great idea to study the fit of the pants that you have that fit you really well. What is that they're doing? What is the rise differential between front and back? Um, what's the rise depth between front and back? Um, there's a lot of things you can learn from from other styles that you really love. It doesn't mean that you should copy them, but I do think it's important to understand um, how to get that data and how to understand it and then how to manipulate it into creating something that you want to create. Because of course, everything we do is based on something else that's been done before. Nobody is creating 100% original ideas. <laughs> so, um, so we're all learning from each other and that is the point of, you know, I think it's the point of art and the point of what we're doing is reflection and uh, continued growth. So this program that I'm showing you right now is called Tukatech. If you haven't watched my videos before, I use I made the switch to Tukatech this year in 2021 because it is quite inexpensive. Here's their page. It's called tukatech.com and this is uh, it's called Tukacad, which is their pattern 2D pattern making program and their pricing is pretty reasonable, uh, especially if you are a freelance pattern maker um, or just learning, it's a really great place to start. You can do the learning edition for $20. I use the professional edition, but um, there's a few tiers of it. I Mine costs, I think, about $200 a month. Um, and uh, yeah, it's great because if I don't have any work for a month, I could always turn it off. Um, for comparison's sake, if you were to go with Optitex or Gerber, those are very big investments up front, and um, and they also cost quite a bit of money to maintain them every year to maintain your license so that you can stay updated. Um, I love Gerber, and I think it's an amazing program and amazing products. And I think that you know, if I had my way, I'd love to use Gerber all the time. But the reality is. I can't spend that much money. <laughs> so I use Tukatech. And there are things that I think are great about Tukatech. Tukatech is really made for small independent people like me. Um, you can print things at home on eight and a half by 11 paper very easily. It works great um, exporting, importing. It really is a very simple system to use, whereas I think Gerber is not really made to be imported, exported. They really want you to stay within the system and they don't really make it easy to be cross you know, to go across <laughs> and print it out on anything but a Gerber plotter, etc. So, um, you know, it depends what your application is. I would say probably in the corporate world, a lot of people use either Optitex or Gerber, and I'm finding more and more independent pattern makers who use Tukatech for exactly the reasons that I do. <laughs> so this is Tukatech. Um, it's a, I believe it's like a point based system. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into depth there because I don't know a lot about that, <laughs> but it is definitely different than the way that Gerber works. It is more akin to the way that Optitex works. If you know Optitex, Tukatech is going to be pretty easy for you to pick up. And what we're going to do here, so there's a few reasons you might have a paper thing that you need to bring into a digital system. Um, so let's talk about the reasons that you might. Um, so one might be, you maybe are working with a designer who has in their mind a sweater idea, you know, they're like, or a boxy top. Let's say they're like, oh, I wanna make this boxy top and I have this one from Madewell that I love. Um, can we, you know, reference their proportions but then adjust it for this fabric and then I want it to be chunkier at the cuff and the collar, etc. right? So if you work as a pattern maker, you know that this is pretty common that people are going to start somewhere and then make adjustments um, to be what they want it to be. Um, so if you can get them to send you either the garment that they want to reference, um, and sometimes they might have a vintage garment that's actually very common as is, is, uh, designers might have a vintage comment or garment they want you to reference. If they can send you a flat photo of it um, and just one measurement, you can basically create a lot of the pattern or at least know the proportions of the pattern based on that. Um, or if you have it yourself and you can take the photos, super great. Or if you need to just go based on a picture like this, you could make that work. So I'm gonna right click, save image as, 
And um, give me one second here. Uh, okay. There, I saved it. Now we're going to go back to my program here, and I'm going to go to Virtual Digitizer. Um, there's a few ways you can use this if you wanted to calibrate this size here. So if you have an area um, that you took the photo, and you know it's like 30 by 30, and that's the size of your photo, um, you could put that in here, work area. Um, I'm not going to worry about that because my I know one measurement, and I have a picture. So I can go by that. Hmm. I seem to have lost that sweater picture. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, let me try that one more time. One second here. All right, I think I got it to work. I had to take a snip and then save it. So now we can go, there it is. There's my sweater. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. It pretty much works just like a digitizer. I am just gonna digitize, and this is something, oops, I don't love that, but this will be good enough. This is something I used to do a lot, actually, when I even had access to a real digitizer, is rather than digitize each piece in, if you have multiple pieces, um, if you, let's say if you have a pair of jeans and you have a pocket, uh, you know, depending on what kind of corrections you're doing, you might not need to start over from fresh. You just need the basics, right? You need to know the shapes that you finalized on. So sometimes I would kind of tape my pieces together and just digitize it in as one big file. And then I could trace that off once I get to the system. So that's what I'm going to do here is I just want to create one large image here. All right, I'm going to stop there. As we all know, we don't close. Um, <laughs> we, we don't close these things. All right, so let's add some internal lines. I'm sorry, you don't close the external perimeter. If you're not used to a lot of digitizing, you might not be aware of that. I don't know if it's making digital lines. I'm not seeing any lines. Oh, that was weird. All right, let's try. Maybe I just can't see it because of the sweater. I'm just also going to add it here and there. And then I kind of don't care if it's a mess. I just need to have a vague sense of where it's at. All right, so now I'm going to close it. it. This part is a little bit not intuitive, and I had to look it up. Um, you have to press the letter or the number two to close the perimeter before you put in your grain line. Um, I know that's well, it doesn't say anything here. I don't see anything where it says close piece, but this is what you need to do. So you press the number two, and now this is closed. You can hear that little bing, and um, I'm going to add my grain line. Uh, I'm just going to do it in the center here. And then I'm going to select OK. And here's my piece. It's super small. It's got lines all over it. It's kind of not so. All right. So now here's what I'm going to do. So let's say you have that one measurement and that measurement is from, it needs to be, you'll need to have an overall measurement from the high point shoulder to the bottom of the sleeve or the width from here to there, you need something that's going to be like an overall dimension of of the piece. Um, so let's say this is like 21. So that's about 10. So let's say this is like 30. All right. So I'm making that up. Obviously, if I had an actual thing, I would measure from here to there and know that the X dimension, this should be 30 inches from this point all the way to that point, which are the two extremes of the piece. So now I'm going to go to piece, scale and shrink. And in the X dimension, right now it's only one inch. I'm going to say it should be 30 inches and see how it automatically updated my proportional percentage. I'm going to select that, control C, control V that into my Y. And then I'm going to select, oh, and you also want to make sure you're only current piece only because otherwise all your pieces will grow. You don't want that. <laughs> all right, so now I'm going to select OK. And look at it got big, see? Now it's like overlapping all my other pieces. Um, now I'm gonna trace off the pieces that I need. So the internal lines didn't work 
the way I thought they would have, and I might have to kind of like work on that. I can see, I think what I maybe would do in the future is maybe I'll just put notches, um, and maybe I'll digitize this separately. Uh, there is some truth, right, that I, I can see. So I, like, this is the shoulder line. I think I can just kind of go from my gut here. I'm gonna get rid of these because they're making me crazy. So I'm just gonna select them and then I press delete and that, oops, cancel. Gets rid of it. Okay, at least I have these. That's my high point shoulder line. So now I'm gonna press D for draw. Oh, wait, yep, it is draw. It's also um, this one, this pencil here. So, I believe the sleeve started right here. Not sure. I'm going to create a point connection and down. Okay. And if you right click, you kind of get out of that function. And Q allows you to move it. I'm also, I would suggest splitting. If you can uh, split this piece in two, you could do that. But I'm just, well, I'm going for my guy here. <laughs> This might not be how I always do this, but you know, sometimes it depends on who you're working with. Sometimes you don't, in an ideal world, as pattern makers, we get a sketch, we get measurements, we know what fabric we're working with, but in a real world, we're not always getting that information. Sometimes we're getting a picture of something they saw in a catalog 10 years ago, and or that they saw in France on a trip, and we're just trying to figure it out, or some vintage garment, that they're not allowed to send us because it's like somebody's personal garment and they don't want to part with it. Um, there's a lot of things that can be tricky. <laughs> and so sometimes you just have to make the best of it. Um, so now I'm going to build a piece here. So I can just select that. And then once I uh, right click in there, creates the piece. You can see that there. And I select here, right click, here, right click. Cool. So now I have my sleeves and my shirt. So I think the challenge here is that what we really know is that this piece is actually more like a box and that these sleeves were overlapping it, right? So probably what's going on here is that it looks more like this. And I would also say what's going on um, is that the shoulder slope is probably a little bit less because it's being pulled down by that sleeve. I don't know. This is pretty, pretty wild. Let's let's uh, let's draw. Hmm. Oh, I know. I want to use the arc tool. So I'm gonna go from here to there. Oops. Why won't it let me? Add point to a line or segment. Well, it's not letting me go exactly from that point. Oh, I pressed the wrong tool. My apologies. I was trying to do this arc tool, which is, where is it? Mm, here it is, arc. I guess it doesn't have a, so I'm gonna, from here to here, which is the neckline. Just make a nice neckline there. Cool. Oops, it did erase that. So first I want to know how big this is. And I think I'm going to just leave it. So let's try that one more time. Arc tool is here. So I'm going to select from here to there. Just draw that down. And if you want to make it asymmetrical, you press shift. Um, if you want to just create a new internal, which is actually what I would want to do, you can select that. So create new internal. Cool. So now it's actually just an internal and I can always trace this off um, to get rid of the neck banding because that's going to be just a separate piece. Um, we're going to build that here. Here we go. There's the collar. There's the front. Okay, so obviously <laughs> there's a lot of work that's going to go into truing this up <laughs> um, for sure. But it does give you some overall proportion. Um, it can give me, you know, the general sleeve length compared to the body, um, the sleeve width. Actually, I think that's probably fairly accurate. The sleeve opening, the collar height, the collar shape. Um, of course, is it going to be exact? 
no, probably not. But but is it going to give you something from basically nothing? Yes. <laughs> and I think that's the true point. Um, now, the alternative is, let's say you had draped something and you have this really unusual asymmetric shape to it. Um, of course, you can also bring that in and you can do that more precisely. Um, I'm actually not even going to bring a piece in here. This is just, I'm going to play around. So let's say you have a shoulder line and then I'm going to do a curve. Oh, it didn't work the way I thought it would. Can I control Z? I guess I can. Okay. Point, 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 point. Now you have this and let's say you have, um, you have some like shoulder, <laughs> shoulder, uh, I guess I made them into pleats, didn't I? Okay, they're shoulder pleats. <laughs> um, uh, let's say you have a bunch of these, you know, so then you, you can digitize those and that's a little harder to, um, and you might want to drape that because you want to get that exact flow. And maybe it's, um, it's kind of like this, it's sort of a tunic. It ends there and then you can add uh, your notches and um, your, I'm going to press 2 to close the piece. See how that closed? I'm going to add the grain line, which is there. That is not a straight grain line, I know. <laughs> I am not really sure. I don't know if you can use Alt in this. It doesn't look like you can. Okay, um, oops, I press two, I'm gonna press okay. And there it is. Um, this one isn't quite as small as the other one, but again, if you had draped it, then you already can give that specific measurement from here to there or from there to there. Again, it's gonna be the extreme of Y or the extreme of X, which is like whatever point is farthest to here. Um, and if you know that, then that's super simple to just give that measurement, scale it up, and then you have your digitized piece. Super simple, um, really easy. So I think this is a pretty amazing tool. I'm going to show you what I do in Illustrator if I was using Gerber. I don't have Gerber on this computer, so I'm just going to like talk about it in theory. And if you use Gerber, then you know how to pull in DXFs into a Gerber file. So that should be pretty straightforward, but I can do another video explaining that. Um, just leave me a comment below. Let me know if this is helpful or if you need more explanation on it, um, then I can go into further detail. So one moment, let me open up Illustrator for you. Okay, so here I have Illustrator and let's say, um, Okay, so let's say we had a picture of, or you might even have a PDF of some pants, and PDFs can come into Illustrator just fine. So here's my pant. Um, and let's say I wanna pull this into, uh, into my pattern making program, either Gerber or Tukatek, et cetera. Um, basically what I'm gonna do is save this as a DXF. And DXFs, I didn't know this until kind of recently, but Illustrator you can save as DXF, um, you can export as DXF, and then you can also import it into any of your pattern making programs. The big difference is, as you know, if you work in, in any pattern making program is that there's ASTM DXFs, there's AAMA DXFs, and then there's, uh, there's just regular DXF. Regular DXF is gonna import it as like one giant file. So if um, you have pattern pieces and you know annotations and sizes and all that stuff, you definitely wanna use ASTM or AMA. -A -A -A. Personally, I found that ASTM works the best. Um, if I'm going between Clo and Tukatek, I use ASTM. If I use AAMA, it doesn't work as well. Um, but everyone has their own opinion. I don't know a ton a lot about the differences in the file types i've just found astm works better for me but if you have an issue that's always what i would say to do if there's some weird error happening just try the other one and see if that works <laughs> so that's a good troubleshoot to start with but in this case we're going to use regular dxf um, so let me export this as a regular dxf Okay, so I'm not gonna take you through exactly how to do this because then I'll end up showing you all of my <laughs> exported files. Um, there's not really a good way to maintain privacy, but basically you're gonna go to File, Export, 
export as, and then you can select JPEG or DXF. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. And I'm just gonna save it in a folder and then import it into Tuca. So let me do that. And you guys can try that on your end. One second here. Okay, so now we're back in Tuca Tech. I'm gonna go to File, Import. And then I'm gonna select the file that I wanna import. So this is the little pant file I had just saved. So weirdly enough, and I'm not really sure what the deal is with this, but it didn't save with the hook. It all it saved all non um, non smoothing points. I'm not fully sure why. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back and try to figure that out. But basically, I can import that. Um, and here it is. It's also extremely large, <laughs> or it's not in inches. So that I need to figure out what's going on um, view it should be in let me try to figure that out one second okay I figured it out so this is what it is it's just tools and then working units so it actually <laughs> I changed it to feet but it was inches for some reason this is an enormous pant I'm not fully sure why I think this was let's see here view rulers um, show rulers I'm going to change this to inches. Yeah, it's just eight and a half by 11. I'm not sure why it exported this way. I'm going to try one more way of exporting it, see if I can fix this. One moment. Okay, so now that I'm in this dialog, uh, this is what I did last time. Scale one inches equals one unit. Actually, I think I left it on points. So I'm going to say, yeah, one inches equal one unit. Um, so now it's going to stay this, ideally stay the same size, which would be quite small, right? Um, if you have a PDF pattern, it should be true to size, even as PDF. So actually you should be able to export it one to one, no problem without having to scale it. Um, preserve appearance. I'm going to try that. Um, alter paths for appearance, outline text. Hmm, I don't know. Okay, let's try it. All right, well, I still have this weird... Dracula coffin box, but <laughs> but um, at least the size is better. Now it's six inches. It's like true to the the original Illustrator file, um, so that has gotten better. I'm gonna try one more way of exporting it. See if we can fix this. Okay, so I'm gonna alter paths for appearance. Colors, color doesn't matter. AutoCAD version. I guess we want the new one. All right, I'm going to select OK. See if this works. Back to it. OK, so this is the one I did just a second ago. See, and it does give you a little preview here. For some reason, it's still that weird. <sighs> that is annoying. OK, well, I have done this with Gerber. And with Gerber, it actually worked. Um, with Gerber, I was able to export a DXF from Adobe and bring it into Gerber. Um, you just have to import it the way you would import a, a, Ger or a DXF in Gerber, where you have to go through that special um, portal. It's not something you can do directly from the pattern design program like I'm doing here. Uh, and when you do that, it should bring it in pretty true to what you had it as, which can be great for, um, I'm trying to think specifically when I've done it is uh, when I had embroidery artwork or um, some very specific shape that I was given as a PDF form or as we all know sometimes as pattern makers were asked to pick up work in various different forms and it has definitely been given to me in PDF form before um, and so sometimes it's challenging so I, I um, you know brought it in uh, by doing it that way I brought it into Gerber by exporting the PDF as a DXF and then bring it into Gerber and it did work. Um, so I'm not sure why it's not working with Tuka Tech, but I will also say it kind of doesn't matter because Tuka Tech has the other option, which I think works really well. Um, and uh, yeah, you shouldn't really need need to do that. Um, let me think of one other thing, because I think there are times when you're given PDFs and you want to bring it into Tuka Tech. Let me think if there's a way that we could do that. All right, great news, I figured it out. Let me show you how it works. So here I have this file I was playing with earlier. 
Um, this is just <laughs> a plain pattern making file that I was, um, this is a shared example I had plotted from Tukatech. So this is the PDF that it plotted out. And then I simply open this in Illustrator. You can see it's still in PDF form. And then you just want to export it. I'm going to turn off recording for a second as I export. So the export isn't any different than what we were doing with those pants. I'm not sure why that little pant drawing didn't work, but this one is working and I'll just show you what I'm doing here. It's one, I wanna make sure that's inches because this is a true size pattern. This is, um, I mean, it's just me playing around uh, for YouTube's sake, but this is um, a true size pattern. So we want it to be the same size in PDF form as it is in real. Uh, so I want a scale one inches equals one unit. Um, and I did preserve appearance and alter paths for appearance. I don't know if it matters because uh, I did that for the other one, it didn't work. But now I'm just gonna select okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull it in. So file, import, and then um, shirt example, that's what that was. Okay, DXF. You can also do DXF AI, but I found it doesn't matter and when you do it, you can see you're getting like a little preview. Okay. And here are all my pieces. Actually, it even imported them separately, which is pretty cool. Um, and as separate pieces, that's awesome. When you do this with Gerber, it comes in as one giant piece and you have to trace off each piece. Not that big of a deal, but it's just like a thing you have to know. Um, but this is really great. So if you received, I know this, <laughs> don't judge this pattern. This is just, um, uh, me, I was practicing tracing off different digitizing methods, but, um, you know, if you're given a PDF of something and you need to pull it into, um, one of these programs, this is a great way to do that because as we all know, sometimes we are given PDFs to work with and sometimes that can be annoying and tricky. Um, so this is super awesome. The only thing I would say that's kind of annoying is there's a thousand points, um, and you can, I believe you can points clean up. There we go. So that cleaned up a lot of them. Um, so you just, I think you, if you do it, it has to, maybe you can select more than one piece at a time. And it's weird that it was on those pieces. Oh, here on the sleeve too, but not, <laughs> it looks like it's only on the pieces that had very arc, um, arc drawn pieces or lines. That's very bizarre. Anyway, so points clean up. There you go. So now you have fewer points. I'm an advocate of fewer is better. Fewer means fewer errors, um, less to deal with. I even think, even think this is a little much personally. I like to keep it really simple. Make sure that's a curve point, which it wasn't. And then you wouldn't need so many points. <laughs> that's what I think. Um, all right, well, I hope this helps answer. I know I did have one specific question someone asked me how to get their digitizing into a digital system. So uh, these are, are my my ways of using Gerber and Tukatech. Um, and of course, you can always just measure it and plot out the measurements. That is what I often do is just use graph paper <laughs> and say, okay, my front hook is two inches and my back hook is four, you know. Um, but uh, these ways might be more simple and it depends what you're working with and what kind of shapes we're talking about. So. Of course, there's no one answer for everything, but I hope this has helped open up some ideas for all of you out there. And um, of course, if you have further questions or ideas of, for future videos, um, please leave me a comment below. You can also email me at thingsbewear at gmail.com. That's things without the I. Um, I'll put a link down to that in the description down here. And I will also link to Tukatech if you're interested in checking out their uh, pattern making program. Um, I, you know, I'm really into it, so I'd love to hear back from any of you if you guys are using Tukatech or interested in learning more. All right, thanks again for watching and I hope you all had a lovely Thanksgiving if you celebrate Thanksgiving and um, yeah, hope to see you in my next video. Okay, bye.